so I made it unread. But this is so you, if you can see now, we, now we have the accounts receivable that went up. Now the accounts receivable is part of the issue because I would also have to track this not just by debits and credits, but by the sub ledger. Uh, who's those who owes us the money, the inventory also needed to be tracked up and down uh, with sub ledgers, as well as just these debits and credits. And, uh, and then we also have uh, the net income down here, income is a the credit is good, minus the debits are are the expenses. So the net of those is 75 on the net income, which is of course, the sales price that we sold the thing for less the cost that we that we spent for it right so that's going to be the journal entry let's see if we can record that over here so we'll save it and close it uh you you've changed normal process terms yes that's okay and then we're going to go okay so on the balance sheet the accounts receivable should have gone up so double click in the ar change in the start date 010127 there it is 188 uh, boom, looks good. Mui B to the end, B in. Closing that out. Other sides on the income statement. Profit and loss, P and L, 175. There's the 175. Mui B to the end. And then we said the sales tax. Balance sheet, there should be some kind of liability account. Might not be called sales tax payable, but something like that. It's something, something like that. Yeah, sales tax payable, it is called that exactly 0101272222 and so that's going to be the 1356 1356 movie b to the n and then we've got the inventory should have gone down inventory asset boom going in that from 0101272222 so it went up and then it went back down so it's back down to zero or it's zero for us it's back down to what it was for them so it went back down, back down to zero. Okay. And then we had the other side on the profit and loss, the P&L cost of goods sold 100. And so there's the 100 net income 75, net income 75. Those are some cool beans, cool beans. The beans are cool enough. You can take them out of the fridge now. Cool beans. Okay. So then of course, the next step would be that we're going to receive a payment on it so the next step would be and we probably would do that in the customer center and we would say okay so there's the invoice now they're going to pay us so so this is we could we could we could go into the invoice here double click on it and say that i would like to get paid if if we would and we could go to the receive payment from here receive payment from this particular invoice normal process it automatically ticks it off here, ties it out there uh, to the invoice. This is the invoice. This is the payment. I'm going to imagine it's, let's just say cash, just for the sake of our practice problem from, and it's going to happen 01, uh, let's say 10, uh, 27. Boom. What's this going to do? It's going to then increase. It's going to go into unearned revenue. I'm not going to get into the whole unearned, unearned revenue thing, but basically a cash type of account. And then the other side is going to decrease the accounts receivable, right? So if I did that with a journal entry over here, we could say, okay, then this is the receive payment. And what's going to happen? I'm just going to call it cash is going up, even though it's going into unearned revenue, because I'm just, I'm not going to deal with that right now. That's not where our point of focus is. And then the other side is going to go and decrease the A to the R, AR. And so they, and the amount is going to be equal to the amount from the invoice. And so now cash is going to go up. So we'll increase the cash. Boom. And the A to the R. I'm going to say F2 plus F2, A to the R. R goes down. The pirate goes down. R. So then, so that's the, so that's going to be the normal. Uh, process, but again, tracking this sub ledger for AR becomes the issue. It's easy with debits and credits because you don't have the sub ledger. So then let's go ahead and record this. So we'll just save it and close it. And then we can uh, check it out. So if I go to, uh, it's back to the invoice, I'll close the invoice too. The invoice shows it's paid now. But if I go back to the balance sheet, then it didn't go into my checking account, but it should have gone into undeposited funds. 
Again, that's a whole nother issue in and of itself. 010127 that I'm not going to get into right now. But the point is, it's kind of like a cash type of account. It went up for the 188, right? 188, boom. And then the other side, closing that out, went to the P, went not to the P, to the L, went to the A to the R. A to the R. R010127. And so there's the payment. So it went up and then it went back down. And of course we can track that on the sub ledgers with reports. So if I go to the reports drop down and we go to the uh, customer receivables, let's go to the customer balance detail report. And so now you've got the normal balance. It's going up, it's going down. We can see all the activity. It's very clear, it's very nice, very tidy. If I go to the customer center over here, we can see in the normal process that the whole, we can see the whole thing that happened, right? We've got the estimate, we got the sales order, and, uh, and we've got the, the, uh, the uh, invoice and the payment. We can then, we could select and sort these by just invoices, for example. If I wanted to sort by invoices, we could do that. I have to change the year to the whole year again. So for the whole year, and then we could sort by open invoices, right? That would be a common thing. There are none. And then we could say uh, overdue invoices are all invoices. Okay, we get the picture. So that's going to be, that's the normal process. So that's going to be uh, the normal process. Now we'll throw the wrench into the process where we get a payment before we do the invoice. And we'll start off with the, with the old way we used to do it which still might be useful in some cases, in some scenarios, in some uh, bookkeeping systems, and look at the pros and cons to the new case. And the problem is gonna be when we have the subledgers for this accounts receivable account, how do we track that if I then include another account down here, which is a liability account? Because then you can imagine this, this customer balance detail report, which ties out to the accounts receivable, is going to be what are you going to do with that right it's going to be messy so which means we're going to get another report and it gets a little bit more complicated but makes more sense from a financial reporting purpose uh, situation so we'll get into that in the future presentations